Hello and welcome to my channel. You're welcome to Kema Freak. My name is Kevin Morube, and on this channel, you know what we do? I upload sewing tutorials, we discuss fashion side of business, and a little bit of my personal life as a fashion designer. So today, you are in my workshop. <laughs> I'm making a vlog style tutorial, and we're making a white lace, which I believe I should have posted a picture somewhere on the screen. And this lace has a yoke and the main bodies. Then the yoke has like a cut out of it. But for mine, I'll be attaching it to and we're going to have a full sleeve with mine. This is the fabric I'll be working with. It's a paper lace. And I'm going to be lining it with this spider lining. So it's like cutting textured lining. So it's just going to work better because this lace has some holes and at the same time i don't want to put like an underlay for it i don't want to layer it so much i'm just going to be using this to line it because it's a fine kind of lining and if you observe this lace it has um like a cutting feel it's not this regular lace sort of it's like a lace made of cutting i'll be using the basic bodies block and the basic skirt which i already have tutorial for on the channel i'll put up a link to those tutorials in the description box in case you want to go through it and um mm, mm, mm. so drop your own patterns and let's get to work Here is the skirt pattern we'll be using and I showed you how to make this already so it's a long skirt pattern this right here is the front and back bodies this is the major place we'll be working on to create the yoke and also I'll be shaping this back a little bit to give it more fitting and to eliminate uh, the zip bulge along the center back on the front pattern this line right here is the bust line, this is the under bust line, this is the waist line, and here is the chest line. First, you need to decide on how low you want the yoke to go. For this, I'm making use of 6.5 inches. So I'm marking my line here at 6.5 inches, which is the upper chest line. I need to contour this area to leave room for the bust and the cup because of that i will mark the center point of this my shoulder line and connect it right here so here i came down by one inch before connecting my dad and please just ignore this first line here i took out a two inches wide that and of course whatever you take out for your dad you replace it at the side to avoid deficit this is the under bust line and i connected the same dart upward so two inches two inches on both the under bust line and the waist line so i'll be connecting this right to the bust line with a curve uh, make sure the curvy part is towards the bust because that's the curviest part that makes sense <laughs> okay so we also like to tighten here a little bit and i'm taking out half an inch on both sides connecting it one inch above the bust point the reason for this is just to avoid sharp points so because i'll be attaching a yoke to this I'm going to extend this line and return back the one inch from this part of the armhole curve. I'm measuring one inch outward and that way I will rebuild this curve. At the same time, on the chest line, I'm going to measure what I have for this dart so that I can replace it along the side here. So this is about half an inch. So I'm putting back half an inch on the chest line here. Now I will redraw this armhole from that point. We are going to decide on the shape of the yoke we want, the shape of the neckline. I know there's a neckline here, but there's another neckline here. So we have to decide on the shape we want. And I'm going for a sweetheart neckline. So I'll come downward here by 
two inches. The truth is I'm just trying to make all sorts of decisions right now. So, okay, let's make it 1.5 inches from this upper chest line. And now I'm going to blend it into here. So on this side as well, we can decide to have a line curving downward. You can decide you want a straight path along here. So it's all left to you to decide the shape you want here, okay? So, but for this, I'll be going with this curviness, with a curviness around here, so. All the way like this. Okay, so I have my yoke right here. This part is the yoke, and I'll be transferring this to another paper so that I can have a folded edge here to work on for the next fit. Before cutting, I'm going to close up this dart and blend the shape of this yoke properly. And I have my yoke right here. The reason I had to cut it out this way is because the design is symmetrical and I will have to do something different on this side. Okay, remember the adjustment I did here? And for this, I'm going to close up the bust that or side that. For the back, we're going to tighten the back a little bit, just like it is for the skirt, okay? So I came inward by half an inch from the zip allowance. So I'm replacing back the half an inch here. I'm not changing things as such for the back. I'm just going to cut this out. We have our patterns ready. Let's do a little work on the yoke. Like I pointed out earlier on, the yoke is asymmetrical, right? That was why we had to do all of this. On one of the edges, we're just going to be having a one inch wide um, yoke that will cut out with the fabric. And then I'll be connecting it just about half an inch away from the center here. Okay, so it all depends on what you want anyway, but this is what I'll be doing for this. So you can make it more curvy than this. You can decide to, you know, just draw another shape, be creative. This is actually 0 0.75 inches away from the center front. So I think the one in the picture just has this, but I will not be throwing this away. I'm going to be cutting out a tool with this, not a skin tone net, just um, a white tool. So I think I have all my patterns ready now, except for the sleeve, which I'll just go ahead and make. If you don't know how to draft a sleeve yet, check out the tutorial on my channel. I really have a lot of tutorials to link up, right? So I can go ahead and start cutting my fabric, adding the same allowance. For this part of the yoke, the net part of the yoke, I'll be cutting out two pieces so that I can easily turn that side of the neckline. Hey guys, it's another day. It's another beautiful day. Today is a Friday and 
on fridays i'm actually relatively free and most time i edit but i didn't finish the work i was doing yesterday and so i have to continue filming i couldn't finish because i had something else i needed to take care of so i'll be continuing the making of this piece and uh, okay let me just set my phone up on a tripod and show you what we have so far look at the pieces I have here this is the back piece the left and right and I have the lining for each of these and um, I have the sleeve right here one of the sleeve is made with this lace and I have the other one made with these two next let's take a look at the front piece this is one of the yokes um the, the lace part of the yoke and this is the just look at this this way so this is the other side of the yoke made with two i have two layers of two here but this part I cut out from lace i have also cut out the lining for it it's not necessary but it's just what i want to work with here so and i have the center piece for the front here and i've cut out the corresponding lining as well so now i'm going to mark out the breast part from here i have this pattern this way the radius is three inches that's the distance between the bust line and the under bust line but i'm working with 3.5 here so I'm marking 3.5 connect it all the way down here so I'll just put these two together and you know get the top right here okay so this way I'll be marking out the I'm making a full a full cup that this center part is just going to be a full one our cup is going to extend from the underboss line here up to this mark upward. For this, I like to label this boss point and to note that this is the top. So I'll place this. Remember that this part is on fold, and I'm going to do that for this cup. If you are going to cut out two separate curves, what I would have done is have something like this. While cutting this on the breast pad, I'll be adding half an inch allowance along the bust line. Half an inch allowance around here because I'll be sewing these two together by half an inch. So you don't need allowance on any other part of your cup. So once I'm through with this, I'll notch the bust point and also mark the top just so I don't mix it up. So now because this has holes, I cut two pieces of lining for each. Okay, so I have four pieces of lining here, two for each. Just so I can fix in the breast pad without worrying about it showing. So how I will achieve that, first I will lay one of the pieces on this. And then I can put my breast pad here. We don't want it to be showing outside because of this holes right here i'll be aligning the notch i mark here with the notch on the bust point here putting the sticky part of the breast pad against the fabric and pin it down then go ahead to steam press These are the pieces we just cut side by side for the front and I have the lining up there. Now I'll be sewing these two together, the center front piece and the side pieces. 
making sure that the notch at the bust point aligns with each other. For the back, I will be sewing in the dart, the 1 inch wide dart for both the main piece and the lining. So this is what we have for the front, I've sewn the center front and side pieces together and that's what our pad looks like now and here is the back piece we did that sewn. Here is the sewn lining for the front. The next step is to sew a part of the yoke, that's the lace part of the yoke and I'm turning the neckline there by half an inch, I'll be sewing the neckline by half an inch and turning it inside out with the lining after which i'll be sandwiching the two parts in between the lining and the lace i hope that makes sense thereafter i'll be sewing the new yoke now to the main piece by half an inch round that um sweetheart neckline after which i'll be turning the seam with the lining so here is the seam we just sewed together. I'll go ahead to notch just so it relaxes properly. Then I'll place the lining in a way that we sandwich the yoke in between the lining and the main lace. I just hope what I'm saying makes sense. I'm really struggling with this. Okay, so but this is what we'll have right here. And you can see the neat uh, seam we achieved here by turning the seam allowance inside. So after that is done, I'll go ahead to top stitch on the lining just so it just relaxes properly inside. So the next thing I'll be doing here will be to sew the neckline for the back piece by half an inch, turning the neckline with the lining just the same way I did for the front and then I'll top stitch on the lining making sure that the seam allowance is towards the lining after notching. Now it's time to sew the front and back piece together along the shoulder. I'll be doing this by sandwiching the front yoke between the lace and the lining for the back. But before then I went ahead to close up the zip allowance for the back. But this is not a compulsory step, you know, before this one. You can do it after turning the shoulder. Once I'm done attaching the front and back piece together along the lining, the next step will be to fix the sleeve. Um, the sleeve made with net goes towards the part with a net yoke, while that made with lace goes towards the full laced part. Okay, so now I'll be sewing the sleeve onto the piece by half an inch, and this is what I have so far. And now it's time to work on the skirt. I will be starting by sewing the dart on the lace and on the lining separately and the same thing applies to the back pieces. Now it's time to sew the skirt part onto the upper bodies and I will be sewing the two together by half an inch right side facing each other just to the lace alone and once I'm done I'll turn that seam around with the lining by sand sandwiching the upper body in between the lace and the lining of the skirt so that way you have a neat finishing along the waistline. Here is the final work. Let me take you closer. Okay, the neckline is a, the highlight of this design and this is what it looks like. And for the skirts, this is what we have here. The mannequin is obviously taller than the owner, so excuse that length. Okay, and here it is. So I hope you had fun watching this. Um, please give it a try on Takema Freak Fashion on Instagram. Subscribe if you haven't. Give this video a thumbs up. I hope you had fun because I had so much fun filming this. I don't know, I just kind of like vlogging a lot. If you enjoy this style of tutorial, let me know in the comment section so I can do more of it. Um, okay, so that will be it. Have fun. Today is Friday, like I said, so I'm going to have some fun, watch some movie, and just you know, be in a more relaxed mood throughout the weekend. A work without play makes Kemi a bored girl. <laughs> So bye and have a beautiful, beautiful day.